Welcome to this topic, EEC Article 1.0, Understanding Philippine Electrical Code Series 2, Part 4. I'm Bernabe Salazar, your source speaker. Let us proceed to Part 4 of Series 2. We completed four sections, PEC Section 1.0, 1.3 1.6. That is Authority, Code Arrangement, Enforcement, Rules on Mandatory and Permissive, and Interpretation of the Code. I hope you learned something important from Part 3 of Series 2. Let us see what's in it for us in Part 4. In this Part 4, we will proceed to five sections, as you can see in the yellow color. That is Section 1.7 to 1.11 under Article 1.0. The five sections are PEC Section 1.0, 1.7, Examination of Equipment for Safety, Section 1.0.1.8 Wiring Planning Section 1.0.1.9 Units of Measurement and Section 1.0.1.10 Apprenticeship and 1.11 Services of Licensed Electrical Practitioner and then without so much further ado, let's proceed. To PEC Section 1.0.1.7 examination of equipment for safety, it states that the specific items of equipment or materials should be examined and tested for safety. The examination and testing should be conducted by organization qualified for experimental testing, inspection during manufacturing, and inspection in the field. This process is allowed to avoid repetition of different examiners with inadequate facilities for such work. And to avoid confusion that would result in conflicting reports, it is the intent of the code also that factory installed internal wiring or equipment needs not to be inspected during installation, except for alteration or damage because it was already tested by qualified testing laboratories. So once we saw logos of testing companies and test results, we can trust the products or materials that we use, okay? This section 1.0.1.7 just tells us that all electrical equipment and materials were undergone examination for safety use. Those testing laboratories, inspection agencies, and listed organizations, as you can see in the screen, publish a list of electrical materials that are tested, compliant, and follow a standard that is suitable for safety use. I know you are familiar with UL, CE, ETL, PUV, PS Mark, and FM. Those are testing laboratories and inspection agencies. Once we sold those seals in all electrical products that we use, we are ensured that they pass the sophisticated testing and safe to use. However, in the Philippines, we have PNS or the Philippines National Standard under the DPI. You can see the list of PNS in our PEC1 Appendix F, page 1069. I cannot list all the PNS here, but since we are influenced by European and US, we seem to like UL listed materials or CE tested mark for Europeans and other international certifying bodies that we know. Let us proceed to the next section, PEC Section 1.0 1.8 Wiring Planning. It tells us about A. Future Expansion and Convenience and B number of circuits in enclosure. This is similar to what was written in NEC section 90.8. During design stage, future expansion or use of electricity is incorporated in our design. But commercial consideration should be considered. Kasi if we add more spare, our feeder size will increase and our protection will increase also. Based on experience, a 5% expansion can be attained in 10 years. Therefore, be careful with future expansion. Baka in 10 years time na, di mo pa kailangan. And your initial investment and the value of the money that you will be spending today are lost in the future. Okay? The most important, I think, in wiring planning is the consideration of letter B, number of circuit in the enclosure. This is the thing we need to look at. 
we want to minimize it in consideration for short circuits and ground faults. Why? Because overcrowded raceway are prone to short circuit and ground fault. So those are the two considerations in wiring planning under section 1.0, 1.8. Let us proceed to section 1.01.9, the units of measurement. It has four sublevels, A, B, C, D. A, measurement system of preferences. B, dual system of units. C, permitted uses of soft conversion. And D, compliance. Under the measurement system, which is the same as NEC section 90.9, the code adapted metric system units of SI unit, meter for length, gram per weight, and liters for liquid, and other units converted to metric system. However, the code will adapt also the dual system of units, but metric will be the first unit to be seen, followed by the imperial units like yards, then inches, and other units. For the permitted use of soft conversion, the code requires trade dimension shall be followed in all cases rather than the measure dimension. So we have a product existing in the market which are all in trade sizes. So we can speak of units, trade sizes are acceptable to use. Clear tayo dito ha, so minsan, trade sizes yung mahalaga. If the data came from another standards, there should be no editing it should not be violated. For industry practice, using the imperial unit, SI units are not required. This is similar to trade sizes unless the code tells us to do changes. For conversion that has a negative impact on safety, soft conversion shall be used. We called actual or zero tolerance. What is soft conversion? And you may ask, diba? So, soft conversion is accurate. Soft conversions are required when an approximation should negatively impact safety, while hard conversion are rounded or approximate values. See the table on your screen. So, for example, for a 4 inches pipe, we simply refer to it as 100 mm pipe, but exactly, but actually, it's 102 mm. If there are 20 pipes arranged in parallel, there is an additional actual dimension that's needed, that's 40 mm. So you must consider the soft conversion in your dimensioning when you are doing layout in a pipe. So it's not 100 mm, it's 102 mm, okay? So for compliance with this code, if the SI system or imperial unit system is used, it is still compliant with the code, but we take priority to SI units, okay? Clear tayo. Let's proceed to PEC 1.0, 1.10, Apprenticeship. It has two sublevel paragraph. This is for the RME Apprenticeship as required by RA 7920 and the RME Training. As is stated in RA 7920, Apprenticeship is required for RME as a qualification prior to the licensure examination a knowledge of PEC 1 and 2 is needed. There was no mention of it in NEC because it is our local requirements here in the Philippines. Training is required under the supervision of a registered or professional electrical engineer. So before signing any apprenticeship, make sure they are really trained. Okay. Now, for Article 1.0, Section 1.11, Services of Licensed Electrical Practitioner, for any actions related to electrical installation and practices, a service of a licensed electrical practitioner is required, whether it's an RME, REE, or PEE. Services are defined in RA 7920. You should read that. It can be design, installation of electrical equipment, removal of electrical materials, operations and maintenance, training, sales of electrical equipment and materials, electrical consultancy, education, and other services mentioned in RA 7920. Wow, we completed the 11 sections of Article 1 of PEC 1. We have a lot of more to go. 
you completed Article 1.0 of the Philippine Electrical Code from Section 1.1, Purpose of the Code, to Practical Safeguarding, Adequacy, Intention, and Relationship to Other International Standards. We also completed the coverage of the Code in terms of electrical services and those not covered by the Code, together with PEC Section 1.01.3 Authority and Code Arrangement. To Section 1.4-1.6 related to code enforcement, the mandatory rules, permissive rules, explanatory materials, and appendices, and the interpretation of the code. And last, up to Section 1.7-1.11 to of Article 1.0, which deals with the examination of electrical equipment for safety, consideration in wiring planning, the standard units to be used, and the apprenticeship of electrical practitioner for the RME examination and the services that you can offer as a licensed electrical practitioner. I hope you got some tips here better to understand our electrical code. Start with the chapter of your interest if you want to study the Philippine Electrical Code. Focus on specific articles and then study the sections, the tables, the figures, the fine print note and exception. You are on your way to understanding PEC 2017. The groundwork has been prepared for you to start your journey to build a good foundation of understanding the Philippine Electrical Code 1. If you like this webinar, please like and share and do some positive comments or criticism for its improvement. I would like to invite you to another series that is Series 3 focusing on Article 1.2 and the next series in the future releases. Thank you very much. I'm Bursa Lazar. You completed Series 2 of this webinar, Understanding the Philippine Electrical Code Article 1.0, Introduction to PEs 1. Congratulations on your first step. You deserve to have an e-certificate of completion coming from Fractal Knowledge Training Services. To get it, please send me a personal message. It's free. Here, is my QR code for my FB page. Please follow me and send me a message. If you want the e-certificate, you can scan it and send me a message. Introduce yourself and state what it is that you need because there is a requirement on how to get the e-certificate that you can use for self-application of CPD points. You need to fill up the evaluation form regarding the Series 2 and answer six simple questions related to the webinar as a proof that you already completed and watching the videos here at the, in the YouTube playlist. It's a free certificate. You need not worry about paying me. It's my free service to the electrical profession. You just need to follow the simple requirement. See you in series. It's about Article 1.2, Important Definition in Philippine Electrical Code 1.